What is up, YouTube? So, quite a bit gone down since I last was on here. Um, two weeks ago, was in Toronto. The big man, Ian, had his first show of the year in Toronto. Hoping for it to be his last, but he pulled out second place. Looks fucking amazing, looked crazy good. I know he doesn't believe he looked his best, and I, I guess I believe he could look better for sure, but he's happy with second place. Frustrated because he wanted the win, of course, but he lost to uh, John De La Rosa and probably the best version of John De La Rosa that I've ever seen on stage. And he's a very notable bodybuilder. Been around for a while, so no shame losing to someone that looked that fucking good, when, especially when he didn't feel he was 110% on that day. So he looked really good. I got some video I can show you, well, just tiny little bit, but I think he's gonna move on to another show. And the crazy thing about him is like, you see everyone after like, hype for a show, hype for a show, saying they're gonna do good, which you should, you should be going to show confident, and then when they lose, come second, whatever, they're kinda of like, down about it, whatever, or pretend they're not down about it, but they really are. But like, seeing him behind the scenes, he made a post like, the day after the show, like, I can't remember what it said, like something like, no, no time to rest, back to the ground, or some shit like that, and he literally, we were at my parents' house, the next day, I believe, and he had texted his coach, asked for a diet, got in the diet and started on breakfast. He was eating chicken and rice and an egg or something for his breakfast. So that's a beast right there. Guy's killing it. He's gonna do another show sometime later on in the year. Don't know what, I'm sure he'll announce it. But that was fun being in Toronto for him. First time I didn't have to even work down there. So I was just chilling and walking around. I stopped by the expo for a little bit. Got kind of harassed and then just left because it was a lot. So. Really was just there for him. Came back and we stopped by my parents. And I filmed a little clip there if I can introduce you to my kind of childhood, I guess teenhood dogarinos, paparinos, as you wish to call them. Hey dude. Porter. Who's a good boy? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Excuse me. Porter here is the definition of, I don't even know what he's the definition of, but he thinks he's a lap dog and he's the most gentle, kindest little puppy you've ever seen. He'll, he's been a puppy his whole life. I think he's 11 now, but he acts literally like he's a puppy. He runs around when you come home. He doesn't really bark. He just kind of like begs for food. He'll be sitting on the couch just like chilling. And he's like a 60 pound, 70 pound dog. And he'll just put a paw on you and then start slowly climbing up on top of your lap. Literally doesn't get angry. You could do anything to him. No one's, he's never snapped at anybody, never got upset at anybody. Just, just a good boy. An overall good boy right here. And I'd be very sad if he leaves us because he's got a bunch of lumps on him as dogs get when they're older and he's 11 now and he's a big boy. So usually bigger dogs don't quite last as long. But I got him when I was in, when it was like 2008, I guess. So I was like, wow, I'm bad at math. 13, I guess. And this is Molly. She's a rescue dog that my parents got. And when we first got her, she was so nervous. Wouldn't like talk to anybody. Wouldn't go close to anybody hid in the room. Even now we'll have family to get together and she's always in her kennel. And when she's out of there, she's super friendly if she knows you. Like, she loves me, because I kind of like that she's, like, this shy, reserved dog. It's matched my personality a little bit, so we, like, we get along. But when she's in her kennel, she's a little feisty. And she's hilarious. She'll literally growl as you pet her. Hey. Well, not really today. Normally, she's, she'll just growl at you when you pet her, even though she likes it. A little crazy. But, yeah, my parents got her a little bit later. <laughs> When I was in like, I don't know, grade, like 2011, when I was in grade 11 or something, they had gone to like a rescue shelter and saw her and another dog there. My mom actually came home with both the dogs because she couldn't stand seeing them in there. So she tried to adopt both and it was just too much to have three dogs at the house, four people in like a bungalow home. It was just like a lot going on. So one of them, they found a home for, the other little dog, got another home one too, and we kept Molly. So that's that story of her. But I've always been a dog guy my whole life. Always had dogs. This is most a dog. She dropped it off here when they went down to Toronto for the weekend. It's Ellie. But yeah, 
I wish I could have my own pupperino because as you saw in my last video, I like playing with dogs. They're great company, but the amount I travel, be on the road so much, I'd be leaving it like every other week with somebody else or a dog sitter or my sister. It just didn't seem fair to the dog. So until I settle down, get a home, maybe with a backyard, looks like no dog was in my future. I guess since I showed you the pupperinos, might as well show you the second best part of my parents' place, other than the dogs, of course. This beautiful backyard. So this is not the home I grew up in, but the parents moved here a few years back. The town two hours away from where we used to live, and they just kind of wanted a smaller town feel. They wanted obviously a beautiful house on the beautiful yard with some water. They've always loved being close to water, so moved to a little bit of smaller town, smaller pace, and they've been loving it so far. It's a really awesome city. I like it too. A little small for me, but I can see why they like it. The dogs, of course. Let's see poor hiding back there. Dogs obviously like the backyard a lot better than living in the city. But yeah, this is the parents' home. They also have, you see that, the guy, that a heron? There's herons back here, there's a swan that I just showed you in there. Lots of wildlife, so super chill to come out here and escape from the city. But yeah, so that's my parents' place and the dogs, love them. Wish I had some here, but I can't. So it is what it is. Also, new things. How do I want to board this? I guess I have a new sponsor. Obviously, I've already posted this on Instagram and everybody knows. So, new thing is Revive. This is a company that I've kind of seen around a while and whatnot. They have a lot of subs right now in the cupboard. I have stuff for my kidneys. I have K2D3 for bone and vascular. Got some bergamot, cardiovascular support, omega 3s, Tudka. Great for the liver and some immune multivitamin. So I'll do a few videos or every now and then in my on my channel. I'll kind of explain the benefits of some of them and et cetera, et cetera. What's why I take them, when I take them, all that. But right now that's everything I'm taking. Kidney product is probably my favorite because it's stuff I was taking before, but it's like multiple ingredients in one pill and a better dose. Because you have to take a lot of the one thing the astragalus, which is like, normally they come in like 500 milligrams and you have to take like five grams, so you take a lot, but it's a good product, I love it, great for me, because my kidneys haven't been great in the past, but that's that. And as always, if you guys wanna pick some up, head over to revivesteps.com, I'll put the link in the bio, and you can use my code CBUM with the shameless plug. All my codes, I try to make them CBUM, so if you guys know, I'm with someone and you're on the website trying to order something, 99% of the time just C-B-U-M. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm getting a lot of questions and because this happened at the same time, um, people are kind of confused, but I am no longer with MHP. So that's, these are technically two brands unrelated. Like I said, just confusing because they happened at the same time. So Revive is a more nutraceutical company. They focus on like health supplements, like the vitamins, all that kind of stuff rather than like pre-workout pro wow i can't talk pre-workout protein bcas fat burners all that kind of stuff they're not focused on that they're more on just health supplements so they're separate non-exclusive for me being with a supplement company but it just happened to be timing that i came to an end an amicable ending with mhp and i'm no longer with them i was with them for three years i think and they were good to me, they treated me great, the team was awesome, I had some good times traveling with them, all that. It was, they were my first big sponsor in uh, the bodybuilding world, so I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had along with them and everything they did for me. It was just kind of, it was just time to part ways, it happens, time for a change in my opinion. And again, I'm grateful for everything that they did for me and just moving on from that. So. That's my quick little recap of what I've done. Other than that, I was in Montreal this weekend, but you guys don't need to know what I did there. It's a secret. And prep starts damn soon. I think we're like 14 weeks out right now. So 
cutting it down. I got a meal plan. It's not really low calorie, but I got it. So I'll do a full eat day of eating. <clears throat> Another video coming up soon because you can, guys can see you guys can see what I'm starting off at. Calories, food, all that kind of shit wise. And other than that, I gotta get back to my day and I'll try to be better at keeping you guys posted. Something I just started, which I'm not exactly proud of, but I got sucked into it, kind of. Put it on the background. But I've been watching this horrendous fucking reality TV show, Love Island, and it's fucking, it's pretty funny, I cannot lie. I got hooked on it because the, the two comedians I watch on YouTube, I don't know, this guy's, it's on Noel Miller's channel or something, they, they play the video game, and they like do voices of the characters and shit and go off, and they're fucking funny. And then, I actually got an email from, I think it was um, some like casting lady from CBS or some shit like that, some like TV channel, and they asked me to be on the show, Love Island, which essentially is just some like reality TV show where they put like five, six guys, five, six girls on like a retreat island type thing, and they're just kind of like stuck there together, and they have to couple up. So they, you start by picking a couple, and you can switch couples throughout, and like try and like find love, I guess, in like a matter of weeks or months or something, and it's ridiculous, but they obviously choose the most crazy people out there doing savage things, being idiots, super drama queens, all that kind of stuff. So, needless to say, I did not accept the invitation to, what's that word, try out, whatever, for Love Island, but it would have been pretty hilarious if I got on it. It's like, I can't even tell you how dumb these people are on it. One guy, at the beginning, like in one of the first episodes, they're talking about how, um, some girl like slept with two guys in one night and the guys like w had a crush on her and because he heard that he was like off and he was like they're all super like British and shit too and he's like that's proper mad that's crazy I'm a proper good boy I don't sleep with anybody like I don't think you understand I'm like I'm a good lad I don't I don't I don't sleep around I'm like clean like I've only slept with like 28 30 girls something like that like nothing and I just died laughing because like what a fucking idiot these people are so funny ridiculous but funny show I'm here cooking some ground turkey and with no seasoning on it because I'm boring as hell. Also, just because I saw this line here, I'm going to redo that clip I just did because I don't want you guys to see my address, but I got a new license in because I moved, I had to change my address. Look how terrifying that picture is. Back when we used to have a slick Bic razor the size of my head completely bald and slick top to back. Pretty terrifying serial killer look if you ask me. A little more fucking bummy now, but better than being a serial killer, I guess. So I'm gonna eat this meal probably and head to the gym and train some arms because they're small.
final meal of the day. It is now 11.35 and this is meal number six, I guess. One meal is a shake, so if you want, don't want to count that, five meals, but six meals today. Trained arms earlier. I'm starting to not even like arms anymore because I'm starting to like get my strength back, get in the group of the gym, making gains and all that, and when I'm not, when I am strong, sorry, I like lifting heavy because that's just what I love to do. And arms is kind of more mentally just like squeezing the weight. You're never really exhausted at the end of an arm workout, but it's still a good pump. I've been doing a few things. So I've been seeing my chiropractor, who's much more than a chiropractor. <laughs> he, uh, I don't even know how to categorize it, but he does a lot more. And he's been doing some like grassing type stuff, but not exactly that, as well as some release on my biceps. And I've been using this thing. Oh, whatever these are, you know what they are, the Tim Tam Fairy Guns. This is Ian's, not mine. And I've been kind of like using that before I train on whatever body part I'm doing. So obviously arms, I did it on my biceps mainly, and it's like my tricep part I could reach. And I actually think it's been helping a lot, just kind of opening that up. Because I have such high um, bicep insertions, I think it's harder, I get more tension on my tendons and whatnot, and it kind of tightens up into a ball a lot more than it would say somebody with a longer bicep muscle. So I find for myself, at least, I need to open them up a lot more like that, which I never really did in the past. And now I've been consistently seeing Dr. Pang for like, I mean a while, but focusing on my bicep for like six to eight weeks maybe, once a week. I've been using that Theragun only for a week now, but I've noticed a change for sure, just kind of opening them up and been beneficial. So if you guys got some kind of like lagging body part and it just feels like, not that you can't activate it maybe, but it just feels like tight and wound up. Like the more you train it, it just gets even more tight and hard and the muscle's not like loose. So the muscle should be malleable, but if you don't have that, maybe try some kind of technique. Even he told me to take like a knife, the back of a butter knife or something and like scrape open like down the, the way the muscle lines up, the muscle fibers line, just scrape down it and even that can help. But I don't know, worth a shot. I'm doing everything I can to get big arms this year, so. We'll see if it works. Already finished most of it, but this is how exciting my last meal of the day is. Actually, even did it wrong, but I switched my meals up today. I'm supposed to have steak earlier with rice, I believe, but I didn't. So, last meal is supposed to be salmon and veggies, but I don't have any veggies either because I'm very unprepared. So, last meal is just going to be like 210 grams of flank steak and I actually cooked it pretty good this time which is rare for me I normally undercook or overcook everything. It's actually good right now. So lucky me and That's the end of today. Didn't really do much today. I Went to Cairo got my neck fixed trained arms Bike to the gym got my cardio in and tomorrow we're going mattress shopping because I need me a new bed, but I'm gonna sleep so good night This thing fucking hurts. For some reason, my chest is one thing that does not recover very well. It just kind of hurts so much every time I train it. And this is gonna be my attempt of a solution. See if just beating the shit of it that with that helps. I don't know how beating something up helps it recover, but it exists for a reason, so I'm gonna try it. Um, yeah, I woke up this morning and went mattress shopping first thing because well, I have a mattress. I'll show you guys my. My current setup, I guess. This is technically the guest bedroom of my place. And um, that's like a really fucking old bed. The mattress is like incredibly old and very uncomfortable. So this is the master. As you can see, slightly empty. I have a printer right there and a dresser in my gym stuff. But the goal is to actually turn this into the main bedroom. So I need to get a king. Well, I don't need to get a king, but I would like to get a king mattress for in here and I've just been putting it off because like I don't really care I already have a bed but I have prep starting soon and I want to actually sleep better like this thing's 10 years old this old bed so I want to be able to sleep better hurt less all that kind of good stuff and my parents are actually coming down to visit this weekend because it's Father's Day so we saw we take my dad out downtown here in Ottawa and do some stuff with him so doing that and they were gonna crash at my place so they go on that bed, I'd be on the couch, and I currently don't even have blinds or anything, it's bright as hell in here, so 
figured why not get the mattress now I gotta get it eventually so then they're lying on beds today and the guy was a, actually a beauty salesman shout out to Nick at Sleep Country guy hooked me up he it's like a young dude but he knew his fucking craft very well so good for him he studied his craft very well and that was my morning today's another day I'm gonna go train soon probably hitting back big day big back day but going along today probably won't film it so <clears throat> might just end this video here as it is another very boring video where my uneventful life isn't too exciting but Hopefully, I've talked to, I don't know if I already said this yesterday, but I've talked to my sister about being my official camera woman and helping me get some good content, going to the gym that's kind of closed down and quiet and I can like get that done at least two times a week minimum with her and kind of pump out videos as I get into my prep. So hopefully it'll be a little more exciting at that point. But until then, you get to see my boring ass in the kitchen and not just shopping, I guess. I'll send me a haircut really bad.